What's up my YouTube friends? OBS is an amazingly powerful live streaming and video production tool. And because it's open source, there are so many ways to make it even better. Today, I'll show you my five favorite OBS plugins that will take your live streaming to the next level. So let's get to it. If you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks to help make you a better YouTuber, subscribe to the channel and click that bell so you don't miss any new content. Number one, Move Transition. The Move Transition plugin is an awesome transition that moves and resizes your camera smoothly from one scene to another. It also gives you a way to smoothly move your camera or another object around a scene without doing a transition to another scene using nothing but your hotkeys. It's really awesome. Let me show you. All these plugins will basically install the same way. There's a link in the description to each one. When you go to that link, you click the download in the top right of the page and select the proper version for your machine and then click download. Then you go to the download location and unzip the file. Next, Copy the data into the OBS plugin folder from the zip file. Browse to your OBS location. It's most likely C Program Files OBS Studio. Open this file and right click and paste the two folders from the plugin. You may get a message to replace the files in the destination folder if you're updating the plugin. That's okay. Now just restart your OBS and the plugin is ready to use. Now in OBS, I set up two scenes. One has me full screen, the other has a browser in the background with me in the lower left hand corner. To create a transition where it will smoothly move and resize the camera, I click the plus under scene transitions, then I select move. I can name this whatever I want and I click OK. Now we have the transition setting screen. I'm going to check all the match source boxes, but you can choose which one you want. My camera name is the same in each scene, so contains the other source name would work just fine, really. Under General, the slider will determine when the scene change happens. For matched items, this is how we'll transition items that have the same names, like my camera. I can select easing in and out, or just in or out, or none. The curve slider will control the ease function. Appearing items are things in one scene that are not in the other. You can set how they ease into the scene and also the position that you want them to appear from. In this case, I have a browser appearing that is not in the first scene, so the position will change where it appears from on the screen. Disappearing items works the same way for objects in one scene, not transitioning to the other. Now, when I transition from the two scenes, you see the camera just resize and move smoothly while the browser appears or disappears. The second piece of the Move plugin is awesome. It allows me to move assets around the screen or resize them with just a hotkey. So right click on the scene where you want to move or resize a source and select Filters. Then click the plus under Effect Filters and select Move Source. Name this so you know what action you're creating. In my case, top right and click OK. Under Source, select what you want to move. In my case, I'm going to move the camera. Now I move the camera where I want to put it and click the Get Transform button. You can change the duration it takes to move the source and select the ease to how you want it to move. Now I'll click the plus under Effect Filters and add another location, this time top left. I select the source, move the source where I want it and click Get Transform. Now I do the same thing for bottom left and bottom right. And now I'm going to create a center one where I resize the camera. So I select the source and I move it and resize it how I want and click Get Transform. Now I have all the camera movements set up for this scene, so let's assign the hotkeys. Go into the settings and scroll to the scene. You should see the transitions we just created here. Assign a hotkey to each one by selecting it and pressing a key on your keyboard. And then click Apply and OK. Now I can move my camera around the scene with the touch of a button. Freaking awesome! Number 2. OBS Shader Filter OBS Shader Filter is one of the best plugins that you can add to your OBS arsenal. 
but it's gonna give you fits. This one you'll really have to play around with for a while to get the full use out of it. There are so many cool creative things that you can do with it, but you really have to search through each and play around with the settings to see what works and what doesn't. Here are a few examples of the cool things you can do with the OBS shade filter, but there are a lot more. Once you have the shader filter installed, you're going to right click on the object you want to apply it to. In this case, I'm going to put it on my camera. So I right click and I select filters. Now I'm going to click the plus button under effect filters and I'm going to select user defined shader. Now in the menu, I'm going to select use effect file and load shader text from file. And I'm going to click browse. And there are lots and lots and lots of preset filters that you can find in here. Glass shader has a cool effect to it. If I click this, you want to make sure that use slider inputs and use slider time are checked so that you get the sliding bars down below that you can manipulate. And like I said, you have to really play with this for a long time to get some effects that you want. And when you combine these effects with different scenes and transitions, you can get some really amazing stuff. But you kind of have to put in the work to figure out what's going to work for you and the look that you want and all that kind of stuff. Here's one where I can add flames and fire over top of my screen. I can use it to affect the colors or I can just add the flames right in there. It's pretty cool looking. And here is a glitch filter one, which adds scan lines and that sort of stuff across the screen. There's so much that you can do with this one. I like this one, this one's pretty cool. And this last one here is a screen multiplier. And like I said, there are hundreds of different ones that you can choose from and create all kinds of absolutely fantastic effects. You just have to really play around with this one. It doesn't come easy but nothing in life that's ever any good comes easy. So the shader filter is an awesome tool. You just have to really learn how to use it and learn how to work with it. Plugin number three is called Scrab. The Scrab plugin is for grabbing screen captures. I talked about putting a widget together to be able to add chat on your screen. Well, so far that hasn't come together, but I have a quick, easy plugin solution that will do the same thing. So let me show you. So to use Scrab, or the screen grab utility as I like to call it, the first thing you need to do is set up a hotkey so that you can use it while you're live streaming. So we're gonna go into settings and we're gonna go to hotkeys. And it's actually the very top one. So you just select it and then you click the key that you wanna use. And then you can click apply and okay. And here's how I'm using this. So I'm gonna type something into my chat here. You can see I have my chat embedded in the side. If you don't know how to embed the chat in your overlay, you should check this video out right here. So now I just press my hotkey. You can see my screen goes dark and everything pauses. I draw a line around it and I click enter. Now I can move this on the screen and place it where I want it and make it bigger or smaller. And this is perfect. Now you really only have to set the sizing and everything one time. Now the next time I grab something, it's going to put it in the same location generally. So you can take a screen grab of anything. So for those who have been asking for a way to put your chat questions right on your live stream, this is the simple, easy answer that we've been waiting for. Once you have the location and the size set up, it's really easy. All I have to do, I'm gonna type something else in here and then I'm just going to click enter once it's selected and boom, it puts it right where I want it. And I can ask questions here. I can use anything from the chat or anything from the screen that I want to highlight or if a funny moment happens or whatever. Now down in your sources window, you can see in your source, when you add one of these, it comes up as scrab cap. And if you don't want that to show up on your screen anymore, you can just click the eyeball and it'll turn off or you can highlight it and just delete it. And it'll delete that instance of the screen grab. But of course, the next time you use it, it will come up and it will be in the same general location, which is really awesome. Number four, input overlay. 
The Input Overlay plugin is an awesome plugin for anyone doing game footage or tutorials. It allows you to add a visual overlay of your keystrokes, mouse movements, gamepad controls, whatever you use. You can also input gamepad overlays. It's really easy to set up too. To use the input overlay, all you have to do is click the plus under sources and you wanna go into input overlay. Now when you do the install for input overlay, you have some options in there. Inside that zip file, you're gonna have all kinds of layouts for keyboards, controllers, mice, all that sort of stuff. And you wanna just copy these to your hard drive in a location that you can find because when you set up input overlay in OBS, it's gonna ask you for these inputs. And you're gonna to wanna to have them because otherwise it can look kind of messier than you'd like. So I can type in my input overlay exactly what my overlay is going to be. In this case, I'm gonna put in keyboard and I'm going to go ahead and browse to the overlay file. This would be those images I was telling you about that you wanted to save to your hard drive. So you just go to that location, and in this case, I'm going to select the QWERTY keyboard with the arrows on the side. And I'm going to click Open, and it shows you on the screen. But we want to have a nice layout, so we're going to click the Layout button, and we're going to go in and we're going to select QWERTY arrows, and that is going to be the layout we're going to see on the screen. And once we click Open, that's what we're going to get on our screen. And then you can click OK and just resize it up and place it wherever you want on the screen. Now this is perfect for doing tutorials because it's going to show you every keystroke that you make. It's really awesome. Now if I want to add the mouse, I just click the plus under sources and I'm going to call this one mouse and click OK. And the same thing, I want to select the mouse I want to use, in this case mouse new. It kind of shows you what this is going to look like, but I need to select my mouse configuration. So I'm going to select mouse with the arrow movement. So there'll be an arrow that kind of shows me which direction my mouse is moving and that sort of stuff. And I'm gonna select that one and click open. And it shows us on the screen what it's gonna look like. And I click okay. And now my mouse is on the screen and it shows all my mouse clicks and my mouse buttons and everything. I can just move it to the screen, resize it however I want. This is incredibly useful if you're doing gaming. It's something else for the viewer to watch and see how you're using your keypad or your mouse to control your game. People love this because they want to see those amazing moves that you're making. They're, they're thinking, how did you do that? Well, now you can show them physically on the screen. It's pretty friggin' epic. Number five, Transition Matrix. Transition Matrix is a really powerful plugin. You can set up how OBS will transition from one scene to another. This is such a great way to keep your stream fresh and it's so easy to set up. To use a transition matrix, all you do is you go up and you select tools. Then you're going to select the transition override matrix. This brings up a box. Now it gives you a little bit of instruction at the bottom here. And what it says is the rows are the origin and the columns are the destination. So what that means is when you change any of the transitions in this box, it's telling you that it's going from the row to the destination, and that's the transition that you're going to be changing. In order to change the transition between those two scenes, all you have to do is select that box, right click on it, and select the transition that you want between those two scenes. Now this goes one way, so you can set the transition going from scene one to scene two differently than the transition going from scene two to scene one. You can literally change the transition between every single scene. This is an absolutely amazing way to customize your live streams and do such fun transitions and people will think that you worked for hours. Well, really, you just spent about 10 minutes in this little matrix changing up the transitions in between each scene, and it's so easy. You right click, you select the transition, and once you have all the transitions set up that you want, just click the close in the bottom right hand corner. Now you can transition from any scene to any other scene using a completely different transition using this transition override matrix. It's freaking awesome. 
Honestly, the transition override matrix, you're gonna have to play with it a little bit because it's not particularly intuitive until you use it for a while and figure out, oh, okay, I'm going from here to here and this one's going from here to here. Some people will catch on right like that. Me, I'm a bit slower. It took me a little while to figure out the lines and the columns and uh, you know, cause I'm a moron, but that is what it is. You're probably going to find it extremely easy. And once you do, man, it just kicks it up to a whole nother level on your live streams. It's awesome. You have a favorite OBS plugin? Let me know in the comments. And if you want to create your own custom widgets for your live stream, check this video out. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks to help make you a better YouTuber, subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.